Well, anyways, if I was more awake, the blades would go in the handle. Try this one more time. Electric carving knife, and it just, it cuts through the stuff like butter. It's really nice. And doing a straight line and all that stuff. Uh, the only thing is, uh, you, it gets, you get it in these big sheets, right? So what I found uh, at Fabricland, you can get a half-inch sheet, a half-inch thick sheet. It's two feet wide, and then you know, meter, two meters, however much you want. And I think it's like seventeen dollars a meter. That's the most expensive part of this process is not actually the silicone in the long run; it's the foam, because uh, the silicone for the upfront cost of it, it stretches an incredibly long way. Same thing with the paints, uh, but it's the foam. But the upside is this is also the easiest stuff er, out of the whole thing to beg, borrow, and steal. <laughs> so you've got an old mattress, you've got an old camp pad, and the foam. So what I've uh, been doing uh, with these is I've been doing, a, a, doing my pattern out of uh, Bristol board uh, first so that I get the general idea. The Witch King, for instance, is a fairly simple shape when you get down to it. It's just the two gel pieces in the center uh, bit. And then I use that as a pattern, trace it out in Sharpie marker on the, uh, on the foam. And I was using this just to rough out, cut out the main pieces, uh, because obviously you don't want to be doing the fiddly bits with your fingers in the way. So once, once it's roughed out, you want to make the one thing with the pattern, okay, pretend this is my, pretend this is my cardboard, my Bristol board pattern, is with this shape you want to bevel, like this is, this is the two halves that make the front, right? So you want them to go at a nice angle, well, so you want a beveled edge, because you want the two pieces to meet, like, up. You want them to meet like this, so you get that nice peak in the front. But what I discovered is, if you normally, right, you think, okay, I'm going to cut this out. I've got a nice straight line. That's the factory edge of the, of the foam. So I'm going to line the pattern up like that, right on the edge, and I'll cut it out that way. No. <laughs> you actually want to set it, like, about a half inch back. Now, if you were just, if you weren't going to try to bevel that edge, this would actually be fine. But because you want to bevel it and, and do some detailing on it, you actually have to set it back about a half inch. From the from the edge, uh, because you need that little bit to grip onto. Because uh, one and, and same thing when you're cutting when you're roughing up pieces with the with the electric carving knife, you even if you can get your fingers out of the way, you want to leave a bit of space all around the edge. Because then the next step is to take uh, a blade, the longest, sharpest. Uh, one you can find. Um, like the tissue blades that you see the polymer clay people using would be awesome. But the thing is, uh, they go dull, like when you're carving foam, it goes dull really, really fast. So it's almost better just to go to the dollar store and get the, you know, five pieces for a buck because um, they're still good blades for anything else. You, you're not completely dulling it. But as far as the foam, you want uh, it to stay sharp. The one really annoying thing about silicone is you have to test everything you use because silicone is a two-part system. It's a part A and a part B. Uh, they're thick, viscous liquids, and then they come together. There's a chemical reaction, and it solidifies. The problem is. Uh, that different things will inhibit silicone, so it will stop it from setting. So you can't use, for instance, you can't use latex gloves. Latex and silicone are mortal enemies. You can't use, if you wear latex gloves while you're handling the silicone or the pieces, uh, even though you can't, you know, you can't detect that anything's being left on the foam or the pieces, uh, somehow the silicone Something in the in the, the rubber, I think it's the sulfur, reacts with the silicone and stops it from curing, so it stays sticky and goopy and tacky and just very very messy. Uh, but other weird things will do it. Aloe in soap, 
will inhibit silicone. So you have, to, if you're going to use soap to wash off your pieces, because you have to do that at one stage, you've got to test the, the soap first to make sure it doesn't inhibit the silicone. So you're always constantly testing stuff. So like this brand of blue uh, contact cement, I know works, but if I wasn't able to get the page green contact cement, I would have to buy a new one and then do a little, do a little test again on a strap piece of, you know, glue two tiny pieces of foam together and put a, a little bit of silicone over top to make sure that it doesn't, that some strange chemical in here doesn't inhibit the silicone. Yes? Have you been able to find a good aerosol contact cement? Because the best stuff is automotive upholstery cement, but they won't sell it to the public. Right. No, I, I ha although I haven't been necessarily looking because this stuff, uh, I've been using this stuff and it works fine. Okay. Uh, so I haven't reached the point where, where I need to go out looking for something else okay. at the moment. Uh, this can be a little bit annoying because I tend to be impatient because uh, you do have to leave it to dry. You can sort of heat. Uh, you can you can speed it up by putting it under the hair dryer, but the bond's not quite as good. So you really should put a layer on, leave it for an hour or whatever it uh, it recommends. Uh, uh, yeah, between coats and before joining surfaces, allow 30 to 40 minutes drying time. It's like. No, I'm usually in too much of a hurry, but you can, ideally you're going to leave it for the half hour and then it comes back and you have a really nice... And you have any problems with the brush to brush it? To brush it? If you brush it, you can brush it down and have it be any problems. I use glue spreaders from the dollar store. <laughs> so you just take a, take a glob and you... Uh, these are nice and nice and flexible, and then you would just apply it. You've got to do two. It recommends two coats, and you've got to do two coats because usually the first one gets sucked into the to, to the foam, uh, and then you sort of have to do another surface, a thin surface one, so that once it's dry, you can stick the pieces together. So it's contact cement, which means you apply it, you let it dry. It's going to go from a milky white to a, a sort of a, a clear off yellow. Um, and then you can, and then you just press the two pieces together firmly, and it's nice and stuck. Uh, it's a little bit stiffer. Like I have used, I did do a test with just epoxy, like the the, the epoxy you get in the tube, and that works. It sticks. It doesn't inhibit the silicone, but it leaves. Uh, it dries very stiff. So. Uh, like you wouldn't, if you bent it in half, you'd feel it crack, and it would actually tear your foam. Um, whereas this, it, it's, it's stiffer than the surrounding foam, but it's still flexible, so I can ball this up and, you know. So normally, um, yeah, so as you can see with the uh, uh, sort of demonstration, which came You need to do at least two layers with this because what you do is you have to do a sealing layer first. So you need to do a, a, a layer of silicone that's specifically meant not to not to smooth the surface or do any detailing, but just to get into all those pores uh, to work their way in. Because then the next layer you do on top will bond to that silicone. So you want to get, yeah, you need that first layer to get in there and make that mechanical lock because then the subsequent layers of silicone will make the chemical lock to the sealing layer. So I'm going to tint, I'm going to tint this so that you guys can see as I apply it, but you don't have to tint it normally. Uh, you can, it can save you some painting steps later. Pick a color, any color. Red. Red. Blue. Blue. Red. Oh, okay. Okay. Red was first. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Red. Well, I need to save my money for that. <laughs> so these are these Fuse Effects paints. Uh, the way they normally come packaged. A bit more colorful one. The way they normally come packaged is they work the same. They're platinum based as well, so they work the same way as the dragon skin itself. There's a part A, and then there's a part B. The part B has the color, so you mix them 50-50 and uh, use it. I am uh, 
going to add a little bit of the B in with this B to color it uh, so that you can see. I do this a lot, so I put them in the squirt bottles because opening the jars and uh, sort of trying to scoop them out and getting worried about accidentally contaminating them and so was a pain in the butt. And it, it works much better in the squirt bottle. <laughs> so I just sort of swirl it around the bottom. Is the silicone something that you'd be wanting to work with maybe like under a fume hood? Because I know some silicone glues that I've used in the past for anything, they say well ventilated. Don't have to not with this. It doesn't smell. Oh well, it do, yeah, it doesn't give off uh, fumes. And with the silicone adhesives, I I don't know. It might be a, a one of the carriers of the binders in them. But with this uh, uh, the dragon skin, it, it doesn't give off any uh, any fumes. So you don't need to. So I'm just going to add a little squirt of the the red. The paper towels that come in the sort of one third size are great. Then you can pull off one for the one for the A, one for the B, and uh, that's the A. Ah, so you can see it's. I mean, it's thick, but it flows. rubbing off the hull so I before I go scooping the B out I want to wipe obviously wipe all the A I can off of the uh, off of my piece or off of my spatula or you could use a different spatula you just as I said want to be very careful that you don't cross contaminate your stuff uh, and then that's the B you can use little disposable mixing cups too um, but then they're they're disposable. I like these little these little metal cups because because they're metal, you can spray them with the alcohol, clean them out. You don't have to worry about you know as long as you're careful, you don't have to worry about the cross contamination. Okay. So the nice part about adding the color is it's is it's it's nice to see. It's fairly easy to see when it's all. Uh, it's all mixed up. Actually, I don't want quite that much. So I didn't put any thickener or thinner thinner in here because this is going to be the sealing layer. So you just it's almost like icing a cake. It really is. So you you just go oh, come back here. You spread this on and you kind of use the edge of the spatula and a little bit of pressure to work it down into the uh, into the foam. Another trick I like, which you'll see with the Witch King, is um, and you have to again test, test, test first. Uh, is I like to spray paint the foam pieces first. Uh, I find it helps seal. Oh, oh. butter side up. <laughs> yes, I find it helps seal the foam a little bit, so it doesn't quite suck up as much silicone uh, without sealing it so much that you don't get that mechanical bond. And also, it somehow makes it easier to see uh, where you're spreading if you haven't, you know, pre-tinted your silicone. I think that's good. Now, um, with dragon skin, I think it's normally. Yeah, so pot life is 20 minutes and uh, demolding time is five hours. So if you were casting this into a mold, ideally you wouldn't take, you wouldn't open the mold for, uh, you wouldn't try to take it uh, out of the mold for, for five hours. However, you can cheat. <laughs> uh, in practice, with the with the silicone and foam method, uh, it's it goes much faster than that. Um, hot life means that just left on its own, that'll stay sticky for about 20 minutes. But take out your friend, Mr. Hair Dryer, and uh, you can heat 
heat set this. So with the heat setting, um, it goes more quickly. I found uh, it's maybe 20 minutes under, like in my workshop, I've got the hair dryer actually like pinned to the wall like this, and I just stick the pieces underneath, and then I walk away and go have uh, a tea. <laughs> and I come back, or I have lunch, and I come back in 20 minutes, and it's good to go. Yes? Would you want to use specifically a hair dryer as opposed to a heat gun? The heat gun will work too, uh, and certainly much faster. I've got one in here too. <laughs> <laughs> heat guns are your friend. Um, and for and for this layer, the heat gun will work fine. Uh, will work fine. The problem becomes with the subsequent layers, and even with the hair dryer, uh, is that silicone when you're mixing it because it's so viscous, it gets air bubbles trapped in it. So what the professionals do is they have these vacuum pressure pots, and they mix up their silicone. They put the pot, they they they, they put the jar in there. They shut the lid. They, they turn it off turn it on for 30 seconds or something, depending on how fast the, the silicone is set uh, that they're using. And you watch all the, the bubbles come out, and then they pull it out and pour it into their mold or do whatever they want with it. And that's great, but of course, same as the vacuum tables, how many of us have, have vacuum pressure pots? Uh, so although it's a really nice toy to have, it's not essential. But the thing with that is that if you don't uh, degas the silicone, uh, you will occasionally have a problem with air pockets. Now, if you, and it becomes more of a problem if you heat set, if you heat set it. So if you leave it for the five hours, what that does is it gives the air bubbles time to rise to the surface while the silicone's still liquid, and they pop on the surface. So you're less likely to notice them and they can be fixed. But if you heat set it, and you're using a thick layer of silicone, uh, you'll see that the, it doesn't give it time, so you'll see little tiny white flecks because the air bubbles have been trapped in the, and that's even more so with if you use the heat gun because the heat gun actually, the, the air pockets actually start to break uh, inside and so it gets, so with this layer, it's fine. I can set it, in fact, I'll pull the heat gun out, we'll set it with the heat gun because it's already broken. It's, it's got a rough surface, it doesn't matter if you see little little air pockets. The fuse effects as well, so especially for you Toronto people or, or, or anybody, because they, they do mail order, I used to get the stuff all the time when I was in Kingston and, and now that I'm in Ottawa. So uh, you can do the mail, mail order and get everything you're gonna need if you wanna start playing with this. Like I said, this goes a pint kit if you just wanna try stuff out. It's about 30 or $40, I believe, but goes a really, really long way. And the other thing is, is that if you do decide that you want to try making molds or something like that, you can also use this for that. Uh, Silicone is very, very versatile. Metal layer is a bit of a special case, uh, obviously, because you want metallics. Fuse Effects is about to come out with a metal kit. So it'll be the base color, the black or the brown or the umber base color and then a, an actual silicone mix that has metallic pigment in it uh, so that you can then do the add the shine. Um, until that happens though and what I was doing when I was doing all of this or these pieces was I was just using metallic uh, makeup powder. This is the silver one is from Aeron, the other one is Graftobian, uh, those are just the two I happen to have. Graftobian makes a silver as well, uh, and I'm pretty sure Mayron makes a gold. They are um, they're, they're metal powders that are approved for using on skin. Normally, if you're using this as a makeup, there's a mixing liquid uh, that you would add the powder to, mix it up, and then sponge it on your skin if you were doing the Tin Man or, or anything like that. So it's an extremely fine powder. And a little bit goes a very, very long way. Uh, so normally what I do is I just have my little spoon thingy. And I don't even, it almost doesn't even need, need the, the scoop to it. Because all I do is I dip it in, take it back out, and there's enough powder on that to sort of... Uh, oh, it's over there. This is normally the palette I use when I'm... Paint. So then just literally sort of tap some metal powder uh, next to the uh, 
wherever I'm mixing the paint on here, mix it all together and apply it to the, to the piece. So what I did with Al was, as you can see, uh, I did a, a black base coat, and then when I went to add the metal layer, was there's a clear version of Fuse Effects. There's a clear coat, or you can just mix up a clear coat of regular silicone. And I added a little bit of metal pigment, and then I very, very, uh, I put a blob on one end, and then I dragged the spatula across, trying to leave a really thin layer. You want it thick enough that it looks, you know, that, that you, it looks silver and it looks metallic, but thin enough in spots that the black shows through. Because then you get that, uh, you get that effect of, you know, the dark and the shadow and the, you'll never quite get a mere, mere finish of a real, that real chrome would have, but you can get pretty close. Uh, same with same with the gold. What happened with this, and I sadly I screwed it up when I tried to do this one, because it happened here as an accident, uh, and I tried to replicate it, and then I screwed that one up at the last minute. Uh, was I had put the umber coating. This was just a scrap piece I was playing with, so you can actually see it had a, a sharpie line because it was a, a, a pattern piece that had gone wrong, uh, that I had cut out wrong or or something. So I'm like, okay, that's tossed that and, and went to uh, cut out a different one. But so it had this, this Sharpie mark on it. So I'm like, okay, I'll just use this for test piece. But I put the, the burnt umber, the earthy umber coat on, and then I went to do this thin, clear coat with the, uh, uh, with the gold attached. So I'll have to pass this around again if, if people didn't notice that at a certain angle, it's bright gold. And then if you turn it sideways, suddenly you can see, suddenly it goes dark and you can see the Sharpie mark underneath. It almost does almost as a holographic thing. <laughs> uh, if you started twisting it and yes, so I was trying to do that with this one, and then the mistake I made was uh, this was thickening up, and I was getting all those tool marks. I couldn't get rid of it, so I sprayed it with smoothie. So it's still got a nice metal look to it. And it's still got a little bit of it, but the smoothie on the metal layer did a. Uh, uh, Almost made it, it almost did a powdered metal thing. So it's got little, almost looks like little pock marks instead of the nice smooth that I was going for. Uh, but I mean, this still looks pretty darn close to the metal. So it's not a total write off. It's just, it did, I was trying to do the holographic thing again. Oh. This might be a neat thing to <coughs> try and get to do on purpose. Yeah. And you have like a, a sub design that shows through in a certain light. Yeah, so that would be <laughs> Yeah. So totally possible in that case, but uh, just don't add, don't spray that smoothie on that last layer. Uh, with the Witch King here, so so there's our uh, yeah our original foam layer just with some paint on it. So uh, the the foam with the sealing layer, uh, the thicker sculpting layer. Now this is kind of rough because I think again this piece came back a bit, bit sticky, so I think actually when I did it, I, I added just a little too much uh, thickener to it, and it was it was sticky when I came back. Um, but I, I pressed on anyways. Uh, when you use the smoothie, the big step when you use the smoothie is before you put extra layers on, you have to wash the piece. If you don't wash the piece uh, and you try to add more silicone over top, it won't stick because the smoothie acts like a, is a lubricant, so it acts like a, a they lack like a barrier. So I thought, well, it's, it feels like it's almost set, but it's just a tiny little bit tacky. Maybe if I wash it, it'll be fine. Um, so it was mostly okay, which is why I kept going. And it actually seems to have cured more uh, in the last couple months, but that's why it's all rough and not smooth like it was supposed to be. And then this layer is, I did a, a, another layer, which is the one I was talking about where I, I thinned the silicone and allowed it, and then stippled it on with the sponge. The nice part is most of this painting you do with sponges, not brushes. And that's really easy because you're going to have little pieces of sponge all left over from, little pieces of foam all left over from cutting out your pieces. And what you can do is if you don't want uh, just that plain surface, you can actually 
texture these, make your own texture stamps. So if you want a rougher surface, you just take a chunk of sponge and you rip little pieces out of it until it has a random, a random surface. And then, a, and then that gets, gives you a rougher texture. So I just mixed up a batch of silicone. Da, 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 da. Laid the piece down, stepped back, and, and as it uh, settled out, it it made these nice soft bubbles. So then I stippled, you know. So then when that when that was dry, I stippled black, um, and then a little bit of actually in this case I don't think I added the silver to I did not add the silver to a clear coat layer. I uh, apply it with a brush. So I stippled on black and then while some while the black was still uh, wet in spots, I took a just a cheap dollar store blush brush and a tiny tiny amount of silver knocked most of it off and just especially in the areas that I knew were or high areas where normally you'd still get a lot of uh, uh, shine like the, the dirt, right? The, 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 the tarnish in the dirt is going to settle in the low areas. So you want the shiny parts to be the high bits, so the peak and the, along the edges. And so I just gently tap some silver powder while the black was still wet, got most of it off, and sort of then uh, blended it in, spread it out. So you wanted higher concentrations of silver in some spots than others. <laughs> Did that, I think, twice, uh, let it set, and then went in with burnt umber and rust, uh, or blood color. There's an old blood color. Yes, so this is the old blood color, which is sort of a, a red-brown. So I did the, the earthy umber and the, the old blood at the same time, sort of blending back and forth to make rust spots. And then there's a, uh, a silicone will naturally set with a shiny surface. So if you want a dull surface because it's rusty or it's old or it's tarnished or whatever, there's a matte powder you can use. Uh, so you can either apply it over directly over the paint, or again you would stipple a really thin layer of silicone or clear coat, like a super thin one, on, and then again dust gently dust the 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 matte powder in place. Is that how you got the, the on the rock? Yes, yes. So I painted the rock, uh, I painted the rock, and then I just covered it in uh, matte powder and let it set for the 40 minutes or, or 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and then dusted it all off. Um, actually, while I was applying some of the powder, I did it with, with this brush that I've been using the metallics on so that it still had a couple little particles of, of silver on so that you got just a little bit of shine just the way in the real rock there's little tiny pieces of mica or whatever. So uh, there is another, I haven't played with this a lot, there is a sort of an in-between um, finish. There's the shiny glossy of the natural silicone uh, or, it, or using the clear coat on its own will give you a super glossy finish. Uh, the matte powder will give you a dull finish. And then the liquid sheen is somewhere in the middle. So it dulls it from the high gloss. It's more, think of it like eggshell, right? You've got your glossy in it. So liquid sheen is somewhere in the middle. I discovered that if you take these little toothpick thingies from the, that you get at the dollar store, they've got a, a flexible, they've got a sort of toothpick end on one end, and then they've got these weird little rakes at the other end. You can actually bend that in half. It gets this little tool. You, mi you mix up a piece of foam with a, a thickened piece of silicone, or uh, and put some thickened silicone on it. And then you can run this along the silicone, and it's going to leave little tiny ridges. Uh, and then when that's set, you rub some brown in those and wipe the rest off, wipe the excess off the top, and you've got brown all in your little ridges. So suddenly you're getting wood grain, right? So you know you can uh, once you know the basics, just start playing around, and you'll come across all different things.